Thank you everybody for joining us. And you know, many introductions start with, I am pleased to introduce, insert name here, and then they say a person that does not need an introduction. And I always thought that was sort of arrogant, but in the truest sense of the word, if anybody in this room has worked with Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom, Russell Brown does not need an introduction. In fact, Russell was in the room over 35 years ago when John and Thomas Knoll first presented what was to become Photoshop to Chuck Geschke and John Warnock, the founders of Adobe. And Russell recognized what a paradigm shift Photoshop represented. And for that, we can sincerely thank him. Now, 35 years later, Russell is once again at the forefront of creative and technological change, which will all be informed and inspired by in the coming hour. So please help me in welcoming Russell Preston Brown to our 10th anniversary I3 lecture series hosted by the SVA Masters in Digital Photography program. <laughs> Katrine, thank you so much. Um, so am I now on big screen? Everybody sees me big screen, is that right? Yep. Um, Hey, I just, I, uh, Katrine, before I get started, I just have to point out my good friend Ezekiel from, uh, uh, from South America and Argentina, and uh, he probably wants me to do the presentation in Espanol. See? Si? <laughs> no, I'm not doing it in Spanish. Um, okay. Um, Katrine, let's get this thing, let's kick this off. I'm going to go right into um, sharing my screen with everybody, and uh, because you don't want to look at me. We got to look at the full screen and let's go to my desktop. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, I'm about to do a presentation about what I've been doing for the last year. And I'm going to do this in Adobe Bridge. I'm going to eat my own dog food for this presentation. So let's just go right into it. Um, so before I get started, I'm going to mention a lot of products in my talk a lot of toys that I use. So jot this down. This is where all my toys are kept. Uh, this is where you want to go to find all the toys. And this is my um, Instagram site where I post all my images. Okay, let's get going here. Let's go back here. Okay. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what I thought I was at Adobe in 1985, when I started, I saw myself as a graphic designer. That's what I trained in as graphic design. I would carry around this thing, this called a T-square, this crazy thing. I wore thin ties in 1985. I thought I was, I, I would wanted to look like a designer. I thought I was gonna be a designer, but in fact, I, I changed, I turned into a photographer. And what did that was the iPhone. And when the iPhone came out, it changed everything. And this talk is all about change and going from this of in 1985 to this today is a crazy change. And I did have my background in photography and I was in the dark room and I was making prints but I've since discovered photography and um, become this, this crazy photographer that um, with a phone. And because I've been hidden away and everybody's been hidden away for such a long time and I haven't had the chance to photograph a model, I started photographing myself and I started photographing myself based upon my heroes. And um, I think uh, one of the basic things about life is you have to have a few heroes. And one of my heroes was Greg Gorman. And uh, he may have spoken at this event before. And so I'm trying to mimic and become Greg Gorman. Now, who would want to become Greg Gorman? I'm not sure. But I looked and analyzed his images and I set up settings in my studio here at home and I set up lights with my iPhone and I started taking pictures of myself and um, wacky things putting on every costume I had around in the house and uh, speaking of heroes I think um, everybody should have heroes students should have heroes heroes guide you through life there are people you can um, 
capture and look at their images. And um, I'd have to say uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Stanley Kubrick, Ansel Adams, Jerry Yulesman, Greg Gorman, and, um, and many others um, started becoming people I look to their work. Not that I'm copying their work, but I analyze their work. And one of the things I discovered, I didn't have any you know, photography training. You look at the photo and I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in on their eyes to see where Greg Gorman is placing his photo or he's placing his strobes. <laughs> so that's how I analyze photos is looking at the reflections in their eyes to see how many strobes that Greg had set up and where they were placed based upon the reflections in the eyes. Pretty wacky, um, but really, really fun to do that. Okay, keep on going through the slides. So here I am behind the scenes. I have my phone set up. I've got a remote trigger in my hand and shooting this. Check out the little lights sitting behind me. Those are little pro photo lights that, um, I don't know, they just, they're tiny little lights that are triggered from the iPhone. And then I have a larger light that's triggered as well and my little backdrop back there. And so, um, yeah, just so that's, that was my workflow with a phone. And um, it's such a, it's so, it's so wonderful to take a photograph with a phone and I don't have to worry about the f-stop so much. I don't have to, sometimes I do, but I want to tap on the screen and make sure it's in focus and let the rest just happen. And so um, these are some of the things that start happening. I'm in the middle of the COVID craziness and I think, okay, let's, let's just take this all the way and see the, all the COVID possibilities for masking and how I might go to the grocery store. So um, crazy stuff. I'll run through these. Oh, this is so, this is, Jeff Shiwi's going, this is so Greg Garman, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> it is, I was doing my LA iWorks um, rip off. Um, <laughs> Greg wouldn't leave the reflection of the lights in there. Um, I don't think Greg would do that, but I, I think they added to this. Um, and this is when I, I, I actually grew hair. I, I thought I'd better grow some hair for this shot. So then you start taking pictures and you, you go into Photoshop and you run um, a filter called, um, this is not fine edges, what am I thinking? This is oil paint. Did you know that if you set all of the oil paint um, adjustments in Photoshop to a maximum of, of 10, this is what you get. Uh, Katrine, have you ever seen this insanity before? Yeah, yes. This sounds like a quiz question. Oh, it does. Yes. What if you set all the settings to 10, um, uh, what would you get? <laughs> but it, you it, get it, Russell Brown. Yeah, craziness, craziness. Okay, okay, keep going. Oh, I see it was zoomed in before. You, I've got more costumes around the house than I know what to do with. Wacky things that I've purchased at to garage sales. I just was starting to take through different personas, you know, different characters, uh, rock and roll stars. I have an event that's based on rock and roll. And so I started um, moving off in that direction. And then i am just gone too far. I've gone too far. When you... Um, you take a Greg Gorman photo and you just try and duplicate it completely. Um, and um, you end up with this. I think my, I don't think my wig's quite right, but um, close. Then you start throwing in concept. I think um, it's great with these images. The portraits were going along fine, but what about a concept that might be uh, uh, an intriguing story? a cover of a, of a book and, and things like this. Here's another shot of my, my setup. Um, oh, it's in this particular shot. I set this up and um, I, again, I'm watching. The great thing about the Instagram is I'm watching what others are doing and looking at how this all works. And Jeff Shiwi goes, well, 
Doesn't Russ know this? If you put a black panel over there on the left, it absorbs the light and you put a white panel on the other side, it, it grabs the light. I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't know any of I'm, I, I'm borrowing all of this just by watching what's happening on Instagram and watching what others are doing. And this is what you spend your time doing during a COVID shutdown. You meet people and then you try and become that person. I met a, a shaper, a board shaper in Santa Cruz, California. And I took on his boards and I tried to be sort of stylize myself to become a surfboard shaper and then take a, a shot of yourself. I don't know what this was, uh, some, uh, I, I, one of my demonic phases. Then, then you come across some amazing wigs. I am a wig crazy maniac. And you come across a wig that is made out of foam and you put on the wig with a jacket and the glasses and you get this. Um, and um, I'm shooting everything right now. You see my background is this gray background. I'm shooting on this gray background but I'm using textures. Um, I don't, I, I love to take a neutral gray background and put textures into my backgrounds. I use something called flypaper textures and paste them um, into the background to give the texture. And sometimes I'll even put the texture over my face. Yeah, that's just a neutral gray background with a super strong texture placed into the background. Um, over the image and it, it's a great way and you use your blend modes in um, Photoshop. And one of my favorite blend modes could be a quiz question, overlay blend mode to overlay the textures over your images. My gosh, look at the text. Look at the cracks I have here on this guitar. This is when I was trying to become, um, Argentinian. I was in my Argentinian phase. Well, I'll have to ask Ezekiel if I managed to look Argentinian in any way. I think I do. I think I do like a little Argentinian. I don't know. Um, multiple exposures. By the way, I'm working, the last year I'm working with an iPhone 12. I currently have the iPhone 13, but you're going to ask me, um, Gee, should I buy the iPhone 13? Well, I don't, haven't really done a lot of testing on it yet, but the iPhone 12 was a really, a really amazing tool and uh, fantastic results from, from the phone, both daytime and nighttime. I still need to do some more testing on the 13. I, the, uh, the, um, I don't have a, uh, an answer on that one, but I automatically update to every new phone I can get. But the 12 is really a remarkable phone. Textures, textures, textures. Oh, yes, we had the Educator Summit and um, Bob Rose took this picture of me. I love costuming and makeup and I will go wacko. I will go off the edge and um, do the makeup. And so in this case, um, we're trying to do the Boris Karloff um, uh, imitation. And then backgrounds, backdrops, Oh, then, then you come across this wig <laughs> and you think about concepts and then you see this ready whip and um, you put the two together and you come up with this. And I think this, this may have been the most insane moment. Um, uh, absolutely insanity. This is, this is the insanity that happens when you're cooped up for a year and you can only photograph yourself. And then, um, uh, more textures. I was trying for that sort of Rembrandt um, painting um, of Doc Brown going back into the past and meeting Rembrandt and having his painting done. And so I had all these cracks and textures happening in, in the image. Uh, Kat Katrine, have we lost anybody yet? I'm, I, Absolutely not. There's still people coming in. They would love. Oh no! Pixel. Oh, that that's terrible. I'm going to try and get rid of them here soon. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that update, Katrine. Um, so you got this style, and I just love to twist it up and make myself look younger because 
uh, Katrina and I both know that the wonderful, most fantastic slider in Lightroom, and by the way, I shoot with my iPhone or a Samsung phone, and I immediately go into Lightroom Mobile. That is what's changed my life. It is an iPhone or a, a Google phone with Lightroom Mobile on the phone. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, if you take the clarity slider and slide it all the way to the left, you can look five years younger. <laughs> it's amazing, <laughs> amazing. It's amazing, amazing technology. So yes, you're going, okay, how can this guy become this guy? <laughs> okay, the, there's the answer, the clarity. So Russell, okay. speaking of uh, Lightroom, yes. really quickly someone asked, are you uh, shooting with Lightroom Mobile also, or what are you using to capture on your phone? If these questions come along, um, you should just drop them in, Katrine. This is fantastic. I, um, this is a nice transition point. Whenever you see a black slide, that means it's a transition point. Um, I, am, I am shooting with the native iPhone and the native Samsung and Google phone cameras. I like, especially with the iPhone, there's secret technologies that are built into the iPhone camera that are not available to even Adobe. One in particular is with your iPhone, if you're doing handheld photography, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to give a tip and technique, Katrine, they're going to learn something. So if you're shooting with an iPhone and you shoot with the iPhone camera and you tend to shake like I do, Apple has technology in the iPhone that will remove shake, but they don't share that with Adobe so that if you use the Adobe Lightroom camera that's built into Lightroom, you don't get that advantage and you get a little bit of a blur. If you're doing handheld shots in a darker situation, it had, in the daylight, you're not gonna see this in an indoor darker situation where the iPhone has to drop the exposure, the, the shutter speed down, you will notice it. And so um, I also love the, um, the Apple Pro Raw is another thing that's built into the iPhone. It hasn't made itself uh, available. It hasn't appeared in the Lightroom uh, camera. I'm sure it will in the future, but oh my goodness. That's one of the things I want to talk about today is, is um, the um, um, Apple Pro Raw with the Apple iPhone. It is the most amazing thing since sliced bread or a bagel. It, 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 you can take it a raw image with your phone and Apple Pro Raw now takes all of the magic inside of the iPhone and puts that magic inside of the Pro Raw image. And the colors, the, the raw components, the, the, the ability to get highlights and shadows. And then Adobe works with Apple to give you a slider. And I'll show that later on in my presentation. The only danger is with Apple Pro Raw, they're huge files, they're gigantic. And I don't recommend it for every photo shoot in JPEG, um, but Apple Pro Raw for your best photos. Gosh, you'll see later on in the presentation, the capabilities of Apple Pro Raw with Adobe Lightroom on your phone. Okay, okay, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a miracle, it's a miracle. Okay, night photography. I shoot night photography with my iPhone and with my, pic, uh, my um, Google Pixel and my Samsung. I wish I had one phone that did it all. And um, in majority of my stuff, 90% of my photography with an iPhone 12. And then for night photography, long exposures, I really love um, the uh, uh, Samsung, most recently the Samsung S21 that's in my notes for class. And um, the Samsung has a 30 second exposure and control over aperture and ISO, really beautiful. This is a crazy shot with an iPhone flying in a helicopter over San Francisco at sunset. Crazy, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Okay, this is my first presentation that's going to show you 
um, the, the wacky side, the behind the scenes of Russell Brown. I've got to keep moving here, Katrine, keep moving. So this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a total fake. This is a total fake. And, and um, I think uh, Joel Grimes said it to me once, if you can sell the fake, more power to you. Yeah, sell the fake. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what the photo looks like. This is what I photographed. But I didn't want to wait up all night to get this. So I want to show you just quickly if this works. Let's do command O. Um, is it going to work? Come on. Is it going to? Oh, it actually worked. Katrine, did that work? Or do we, are we in Photoshop? Beautiful. I see oh. layers. So um, watch this, Katrine. This is insanity. Um, I'm going to take off the layers here and you start here. This is the secret to making daytime look like nighttime. And it is simply, I got to, I got to move. It's simply a levels control with your output controls. And so you run your white point on your output controls over until your photo becomes nighttime. And then you can go back in and the trick is let's turn the sky off and let's turn this off. So if we turn this off, so here's nighttime. If you carve a mask through the night sky, you carve the mask that reveals the daytime photograph and the nighttime photograph you can then see how this works. Does that seem logical, Katrine? We're, I'm scraping yep. through the mask to reveal daytime at night. Which makes that, the light look really realistic, which is beautiful. Yes. Me. And you know what else? This is wacky, Katrine. This secret is, um, let's, uh, okay, how does he, how do you, let's close that. Let's go back here. Oh, let's click here, right? That, don't do that, okay. Because look at the detail that an iPhone can capture in the daytime, Katrine. Yep. And then you take that detail, you shade it back with levels, and you don't. And if you took this with an iPhone at night, you just wouldn't get those same details. The same is true here in Goblin Valley. Am I a criminal, <laughs> Katrine? Am I a criminal? <laughs> Absolutely not. You're a hunter and gatherer. So look, Katrine. It's high, it's high noon. High noon, by the way, works best for night photography because you can hide those shadows. So let's see that again. High noon, levels control, turn off the lights, paste in a new sky. And Katrine, did you know you can put replace sky in Photoshop? You can use nighttime skies in sky replacement? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. darn. You're supposed to say no, then I would look. No, oh, I'm sorry. And there was no uh, blending mode in that levels layer? Blending mode, blending mode. Uh, no, uh, blending, what do you mean by blending mode to- um, Like if you did like multiply or something on that levels layer. I didn't on this one. <laughs> this is just a day, yeah. I just tuned it down with that whites, uh, the output oh. controls, output controls. Okay, keep on moving. We, we have so much to say and so little time. Um, daytime becomes nighttime and then you put a beam in the sky. I'm Mr. Alien. I was abducted by uh, aliens when I was a child and I just can't get over it. Um, a nighttime sky actually taken with a Samsung phone at night, a one second exposure of the um, Aurora Borealis. Crazy things with a phone, long exposure. How do I take my long exposure? How do you take your long exposure? I use my favorite app has to be Slow Shutter. I'm just gonna zoom right in on this. Are these notes in those notes we saw earlier? Yes, they are. <laughs> um, if you go back to my notes at the beginning, the Russell Brown, um, you can see them. Okay, keep moving. Long exposure with a um, Samsung phone, 30 second exposure. And the guide is holding, I made him hold a light and walk up to the top of the um, telescope. Um, long exposure with the iPhone. The Palace of Fine Arts is the place to go to test a new phone. And I have to go there to test the 13. 
I love the quality of the iPhone. Look the way it treats the 30 second exposure of the water with the iPhone. And speaking of that, um, 30 seconds when working with the iPhone and doing night photography, always set it to the maximum uh, exposure time with your iPhone and always use a tripod with your iPhone or any of their phones to get your longest exposure, the Google phone, the iPhone, just to point out 30 seconds is really fantastic. And then you can get results like this. And then you, you visit um, South America, you're down in um, uh, New Zealand and you realize that the Milky Way is upside down. And you realize the uh, Orion's belt is upside down. And I couldn't quite grasp this until somebody told me, all you do is stand on your head and look at the night sky, and then you can pretend you live in Argentina. So Argentinians are standing on their heads all day long. And, and we, <laughs> that, that, yeah. who knew, who knew? Um, crazy things, photographs of um, the sky. Katrine, what is this? Is this a daytime? I'm sorry, Katrine, I'm gonna make you jump in. Is that daytime? Of course well, I'm it not is. Sure. Course I'm it not is. sure what planet it is. Oh, this is, in, um, uh, this is in Utah. It's called Capitol Reef and it's an amazing location. Keep going. We're in, um, um, where are we? We're in uh, Joshua Tree at night. This was entirely captured as one shot with a Google Pixel 4, one shot. Um, a Google Pixel 4, one shot with me holding a light to light up this dragon in Anza Borrego. Keep going, Ross, keep going. It's night photography, he has so much to talk about. Streaking <laughs> stars, streaking stars. Um, Katrine, how do I do streaking stars? How do I do streaking stars? Let's see, let's command O. Quick, quick, go Russ. Oh, oh, oh we're back in. Um, so there's an application on the iPhone, your long exposure application on the iPhone um, called Nightcap. Again, that's in my notes. Nightcap gives you a shot like this. Great shot of the stars in motion, but Nightcap does not give you a great foreground. So I'm using Photoshop to combine two images together in, on, um, in Photoshop on the desktop or even Photoshop on my iPad. So just something to point out. Don't, you don't always have to live with what your phone gives you. And I think that's a point to make is that we often think we have to, um, come on, okay, keep going. Is it gonna go? Keep going. Okay, there. Don't always live with what you get with your phone. Cheat. <laughs> Put in a better sky. Um, it, the, what's the goal in life? What is the goal in life? Goal in life is to get more, <laughs> is to get more likes on Instagram. Come on, that is the goal in life. I want people to notice me. So don't don't fool around. Do really great photos make them look real, and just don't tell the truth. <laughs> um, this, get great photos, great, get great content, and bring it together to make great night photos. Okay, next on my list, light painting. Can you do light painting with a phone? The best light painting I get um, with a phone um, is with a Samsung phone, because I have a 30 second exposure and I can adjust it my, um, I can adjust the exposure, aperture, Samsung phone is a camera. It's really fantastic. And I'm using what's called uh, tube tribe lights um, from Eric Pere. They're in my notes. Um, I swing the light around like a lightsaber under a long exposure and you get shots like this with a phone. And so I've gone phone crazy. This was done with an iPhone. What? It's a 30 second exposure with an iPhone. I start the exposure and I run out there with my lightsaber and I spin it around during the 30 second exposure. And as, as I'm walking out, notice I'm lighting up the, the fence. So even an iPhone can do a pretty good shot with long exposure. 
um, crazy stuff. This looks bigger than it should be. Oh no, it's not, oh, that's the regular size. Um, long exposure, here's the trick. Light painting is an art, an absolute art. You need to come across a Van Gogh or even a um, Pablo Picasso. If you find somebody who can really do light painting well, track them down, follow them, because all you have to do is set up your camera and this happens. I know nothing about light painting. I know nothing about modeling, but um, Eric Perret comes in, the Van Gogh, the, the Pablo Picasso of light painting, and he steps up in front of you and you just set up your phone and this happens. <laughs> um, so there's my suggestion about light painting. It's difficult to do unless you come across a really wizard and then you set up your phone. It's like walking into Pablo Picasso's studio and you get to photograph Pablo Picasso doing a painting. And then you, and then you show the photograph off and you're an artist. Okay. Then you go to Bruce Haven's house, um, uh, Bruce and Linda, lynda.com. And he's got these wonderful cars and you light paint the car in front of his house. Um, yes. Stunning. Stunning stuff. And then you go on the way to Bruce's house, you drive to the Pismo Beach Pier and you stand under the pier for a long exposure and you do this light painting with your lightsaber. Um, and you can see the gorgeous way this long exposure is treating the movement of the, um, of the water, yet I'm lighting up underneath the, it's even darker underneath the um, pier because it's a full moon out there. So you have full moon light combined with your light under the pier, really amazing stuff. Keep going, Ross, keep going. Next, next. Did we have any questions? Because that was a transition point. No, I think everybody's done. I want to, I do want to interject in a moment. Yes. Like five years ago, you would say on Instagram, you want to get a great photo, stand next to a talented photographer. <sighs> and I'm, I, I want to tell you, I, I couldn't stand it when you wrote that. I'm telling you now in front of everybody. And now if you want to get a great that. photo, we have to stand next to you. These are no, fabulous. I, you thought I wrote that? No, you did write it. I did? Yeah. But I now let tell us about your series of the artists. Oh, oh, yeah. These are these um, performing artists. Um, um, so this is um, Melissa um, Little Wolf. I took her to um, some really amazing locations in Utah and um, um, took her off. Oh, wait, wait, Russ. We can do better than this. We can escape. We can. And I know that Marco is going to be watching me very carefully to make sure that I click this button. And then I click this button and you get Melissa and you take her into the canyons in Utah and she plays this flute. And given yesterday was indigenous people's day. I thought it was, she's um, a native American um, and does amazing. I'm shooting this with my iPhone on a tripod and then um, capturing the audio with the iPod, with the iPod, did I say iPod? <laughs> did I say iPod with my iPhone? That's how old I am. So amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Okay, quit from that, go back to the show. Oh, I'm actually, I think I, Marco might actually be impressed that I actually got that right, Katrine. Um, Gorgeous shots. Um, okay, next, quick, the next thing. God, I haven't told them anything new. It's 440, Katrine. Oh my, it's, well, that's California time. Okay, um, Katrine, I mentioned earlier about um, um, Apple Pro Raw, and I want to prove it to you right now. If there's one thing I need to do during this pre presentation is prove about Apple Pro Raw. Um, this is a shot in the sand cave in Utah. And if I, if I hit open, oh, Katrine, I'm so good. Um, mm. This is a, this is an Apple Pro Raw image placed into 
Photoshop as a smart object, Katrine. I like talking to you, Katrine. Um, and um, it's in smart objects, so I can double click on the smart object and see it in camera raw. And here is what all, this is the only thing you have to learn from my presentation is Apple Pro Raw immediately becomes available to you as a control. This is what Adobe and Apple gives you from the raw image. This is what they gave you two years ago, whenever this came out. This is what the raw looked like. And we had to struggle to make it look like this. Do you remember those days? And oh, so yeah. Apple and Adobe could team up to take that raw image and add their magic to this profile. So I'm at 100% of the magic, or you can add 200% of the magic and go farther. But, oh, this is a game changer. This is a total game changer. Shooting with an iPhone that automatically corrects it. And all you have to do, okay, end of story. End of story. <laughs> Does that work in Lightroom too? This works in every version of Lightroom. This is Lightroom on my desktop. This is Lightroom on my phone. This is Lightroom on my iPad. This is Lightroom on a Pixel phone. Did I miss any? No, you, this you is got in, it. So this, this, this is technology in Lightroom. In Lightroom I'm a too. Lightroom desktop person, by the way. Um, I live and breathe Lightroom desktop. I, I will have to tell you the truth is I, I did not I was I did not get into um, Lightroom uh, Classic very quickly. I did not feel comfortable in it. It wasn't until Lightroom Desktop that I really felt comfortable working with my iPhone and um, this whole workflow to my iPad. So I'm an iPhone or Google phone to my iPad and Photoshop user. Wait, there's one more thing to tell you. Okay, it's 4.43, I still have time. Um, taking photographs of flames, who knew, who knew you could take photographs of flames um, with an iPhone. You may have taken pictures of fireworks or flames or something bright. All you have to do is set the um, app, not aperture, the exposure compensation on your iPhone 12 or iPhone 13, exposure compensation to a minus two right here. And under exposure compensation, then take your pictures of flames or bright things or even fireworks with the phone gives really great results. Um, another fantastic secret I discovered. Okay, keep on moving. I maybe have something else to say. This is Yuri. He works out of Las Vegas. Um, what a character, um, a great character face. Um, he's an acrobat and handstand expert, um, but I use him for modeling. <laughs> I turn him into these different characters. Did I shoot him against a cement backdrop? No, I just pasted that in and did a blend over and overlay blend mode. Um, paste your character into a background. How do you colorize um, the character so he looks like he's in the scene? You paste a second version of the image over your model. And then you set the blend mode to color. And now your model takes on the coloration and lighting of your scene. Do you get that, Katrine? Did I explain that well? Perfectly. You got a background, you put a second copy of the background over Yuri, and then you set it to color and adjust it. What a, what a gimmick, what a gimmick. Um, pacing in backgrounds. Um, this is Chase, um, again, a model out of, some, out of uh, Las Vegas. Why did I go to Las Vegas so much? I'm not quite sure. I drove to Las Vegas at least five times during the pandemic, <laughs> okay, <laughs> craziness. Um, then you find this Airbnb in Joshua Tree and you can see me setting up take behind the scenes shots. Um, and then you hit Death Valley on the way. 
with an iPhone, keep on going. What's it doing? It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. Oh, there we go. Okay, it was just delaying. Let's see what happens. And then you get this shot. Katrine, Katrine. Yes. This is the first time I got Greg Gorman to comment on a photo. <laughs> and that that makes your day, doesn't it, Katrine? You get right. I hear you. You, you get a Greg Gorman to comment on your photo at the sand dunes. Um, and you take um, Chase out to the sand dunes. Okay, Katrine, do you like this photo or the original? Oh. I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna show those to you again. I took out all the mechanism and just did this. What, what do you think? Hmm, would, well, you, you might think that would be a lot of retouching or could you do it with a composite? Yeah, yeah, this I guess proves this is sort of a question. This proves that the person was there and you were there. Is this more realistic as a better photograph or is it more realistic as uh, this art? I just saw this line coming down. Yeah, 100% this one. This, this one. one is this one elevates the, the scene and the character and, and allows your mind to soar along with the image. Okay, uh, just I was checking my, my logic there. Here I've taken out the apparatus. I've taken out the the structure because I felt it. I didn't need it. I, again, I just wanted to have them floating. This is crazy. I'm getting better at light painting. This woman <laughs> shoots a target in Vegas with her toe. Okay, you you just have to go photograph this. And so we're hitting the trigger. I'm doing the light painting. This was done with a Samsung, and it's an eight second exposure. And I use a strobe combined with light painting. Wacky stuff. Uh, oh, 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 let's see this. Okay, this is, okay, here, here I go. Strobe, and then light paint. And uh, that maybe, is that too small? Okay, moving on. So I take these photographs of these um, really amazing acrobats. Again, I in this situation, I photographed this in a room where the texture of the wall just wasn't quite right. So I found these really interesting textures on Adobe stock photos. Re and I pasted these in and found forms and shapes that seem to move with their movement. And um, so I think if you run into a situation where we have a boring background, there, there are no boring backgrounds. There's only, you're only, you have to expand out and find backgrounds and use that blend mode of overlay. Not that that's in the pop quiz questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you do this wacky stuff. I find some chairs. I find some chairs on the street and <laughs> I bring them in and we did this insanity, but only these guys could really do this. Gosh, talent. Okay, wacky, you're in Hawaii. You don't have the right clouds. You don't have the right sunset. I cheat, I, I cheat, okay. Now, nobody's, I'm not getting any more likes on Instagram. Did I cheat here? No, I've got a, some lights, um, some LED lights attached to the bicycle. Um, again, I'm doing that eight second exposure. I strobe my subject and then I do the eight second exposure combination. And this can only be done with a Samsung S21. Yeah, I can't, I haven't been able to figure out how to do this with an iPhone. Um, double exposure in, um, Photoshop on my iPad. Katrine, I shoot on my phone. I don't use a, a laptop anymore. I'm, I just don't use a, a laptop of any sort. I go directly from Lightroom, from the iPhone into Lightroom. Lightroom shared to my iPad. Edit in Photoshop. Okay, post on the web. Yeah. This is an amazing time, Katrine. This is an amazing time. We have come into an era where we can do 
creative things like this. I am, we are, I am so lucky to be alive right now with this much magic. Wouldn't you say the same, Katrine? There's just it's, so it, much it, magic. And that, uh, that fluidity of the technology really yeah. lets you also in a way become, I don't like saying more creative and more fluid with your work. Because yeah. you're spending less time worrying about widgets, cables, and downloading, and you can yeah, really yes. concentrate on the image. That's exactly it. Widgets, cables. I'm, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to use that in my <laughs> next presentation. Wackiness in um, in Las Vegas. Uh, throw paint at um, acrobats. Um, this um, woman. This is. Um, wait, you look at my list. I my brain can't uh, handle this. This Elena Chamberlain. Elena does her own makeup. So this is her own makeup on her face. And then I went to her house and did this photograph. Elena is 17 years old. <laughs> good grief, good grief, what a beauty. Um, I love performers, I love performers. And um, one of my favorite places, this is the um, Sepulveda dam in LA. Someday there'll be a hundred year flood in LA and this thing will be flooding over. But um, between now and then, it's got to be the best um, photo location in Los Angeles. Um, special effects, special effects. I love to, I, I go crazy over reflections. If, if I want water, I add water. I, I did a presentation once called Add a Plane. Um, I think um, you can add things to photographs to enhance them more. I thought making her look more like a clouds was really quite interesting. Um, sunbursts, God, I am the worst. An iPhone can't give you a sunburst. So I paste them in. I can't believe that Russell Brown would paste in a sunburst. I'm, I'm gonna tune out right now. <laughs> um, performers, performers. Kate um, and Brian, um, amazing performers. This is um, in uh, Santa, Mon Santa Barbara. We're just hanging there from the bridge there in Santa Barbara, a strobe just there at the blue hour combination, uh, iPhone shot. I've been shooting with um, the um, iPhone 12 all the year and using a pro photo. I am not a paid for by pro photo. I'm just a, a geek who likes toys and all the pro photo equipment links directly to your iPhone. This is the A, um, that's a larger strobe. And I also have these smaller, like a $200 strobe that links to your phone. This is a great economical little strobe for um, different projects. And you hit your trigger on your phone and boom, you get a strobe and you can freeze your action. Uh, really beautiful stuff. Um, put this on your list someday to visit uh, Bombay Beach in um, Southern California, Bombay Beach over near the Salton Sea. The, the, the sunsets and the light at Bombay Beach, it's wacky, it's just crazy the, the way the the clouds form and the light is, check this next shot, the, the, um, there's an art, there's this swing out in the water to the left, the clouds are setting over here, we've hit blue hour, I pop my subject with a little strobe with the iPhone, and um, he's standing on this, um, this um, not type, uh, diving board, that's floating out in the water because the Bombay beach is a combination of different art installations. The swing in the middle of the water is an art installation, but it works really well in photography. And then you take some characters in costume and you get this stunning light. iPhone, Apple Pro Raw, really big files, but gorgeous, gorgeous colors um, to the sky. And then you say to yourself, boy, I wish I would have had somebody doing light painting. And so you just um, add this in. Now, this is my son calling. Do we answer the phone call to my son during the presentation? No, no, no. We, we tap the button 
call back later, unless he's watching my performance. Um, uh, I added in those uh, sparklers uh, because I just felt like it needed sparklers. What do you think, Katrine? <laughs> needed sparklers, <laughs> it needed sparklers. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, fire breathing. Um, here's a quiz question for the students. What setting was Russell using to photograph fire breathers, Katrine? What do you think? Any of the students want to respond? What setting on his iPhone did he make to make flames look good? I need that music. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we'll ask them. We'll ask them later. Keep on going. Okay. Oh, there we got it. We got it. What, what Charlie, was it? He said minus two exposure. They minus listen. two the on the exposure were compensation. Listening? They were listening to me. Unbelievable, Katrine. I Every second. Listen to, I didn't listen to my hands. <laughs> did you, did the other people in this know, uh, did Ezekiel know he could get credits from New York um, of fire uh, minus two? Um, these guys are great. I mean, uh, they said, um, I know this, this underground, uh, this is below the San Diego freeway. It's up weird little place. You walk behind the scenes, you're under I-5 in San Diego, and this crazy underground world is there where you can do this, this fire um, dances, and um, I'm having such a blast um, doing this. Oh, Katrine, check this out. See the double exposure on his face there. I, I'm doing a slow shutter you call that slow shutter drag? Shutter drag. drag. Shutter drag. Yeah. I didn't or even drag know. Shutter. What I, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, there's nothing better than flame, um, uh, flame, uh, fire breather. Gosh. Then, then you go to Santa Fe, New Mexico. You come across Clint Mortensen, who has a tame bison and his son Wyatt and you go into a local um, town a um, old west town where uh, movies were shot I'm sure um, many of the old westerns were shot here you just put that combination together with your iPhone and the clouds were perfect that day and I think you mentioned Katrine it's all about the shadow it's all about the shadow in this shot um, and then here's me getting all dirty on the ground in this old town. Gosh, it was so fortunate. And there I am with my iPhone and here comes another. Um, if you're gonna go shoot with an iPhone um, in my toys, get serious, um, get serious, get serious. I use um, a grip with my iPhone that holds onto the phone and the phone slides into this. This is um, the... Um, this is the grip. <laughs> what is this? This is the pro grip. This is the beast grip. This is the beast grip. And this other one is the pro grip. Um, the pro grip, is, which is in my list, comes with a battery pack built into it and a trigger on the front so you can slide your phone in and um, hit the trigger and grip onto your phone. And it rotates both horizontally and vertically technology so toys uh, the grip is so important when you're doing photography don't fumble around with your phone get a good grip for your phone um, to make that work okay keep going photographs strobing with my um, strobes the sky was perfect the lighting was perfect buffalo I mean what can you do it, it can't do too much wrong so we've got um, Clint on the right here and his son, Wyatt, and their Buffalo um, Clyde. Clint is a silver smith out of the Santa Fe area who just happens to have a bison. What an opportunity, what an amazing opportunity. Um, Tammy Firefly, more artists, performers, experimenting with motion and the iPhone, long exposure. Um, and then you get this, let's see, can I double click on? No, I hit the escape key. 
I double click on this, I hit this, I hit this. Um, how am I doing, um, Marco? Yeah, I think I'm doing okay. And then the flames are really, really hot. So I tap on it and then jump back. And so that's the craziness you can do with your minus two exposure on an iPhone. Um, escape from that. Um, close that. Go back to the show. Okay, next section. Um, what do I want to say? Um, is this about storytelling? This is about storytelling. This is about storytelling. Never, um, never uh, let a, um, so quiet. never let a good story get in the way of the truth. Um, fake bird, but it added to the story. Um, you can't see an eclipse in the daytime, but make a story. Obscure 39G activated. 39G activated. Katrine, are we in trouble? <laughs> that sounds like the omega the omega 13's been activated. So I went back 13 seconds. <laughs> okay, uh, add a dragon when you need a dragon. Shadows, shadows, shadows. Have fun with shadows. Um, I just some really curious things you can do with shadows. It's such an old classic graphic design trick, but Give it a try on one of your projects. Shadows, shadows, shadows. Uh, there's stories within images. Take your images and make a story happen. Think about a book cover and what, what is, I would want to open this book if I saw this story, um, is what I was going with these different techniques. I would want to open this book if I saw this story. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I got to open this book. Okay. Rings, rings, rings. I had this phase where I went ring crazy. So I'm adding rings to the sky. Oh, and add a figure. You have to have somebody pointing at the rings down here. Rings, rings, rings. Rings over the bridge. Rings, rings, rings. Rings <laughs> around a performing artist. Rings, multiple rings. Rings in the sky. Uh, um, Jerry Eulsman saw this and said, Russ, there's hope for you. <laughs> so I felt that was good. Rings. These uh, honeycomb, these are kilns in Death Valley for uh, burning down trees and turning them into um, charcoal in the 40s and then you um, add rings. Uh, you shoot a time-lapse of a seagull walking at the bridge, and then you take multiple uh, shots of the, of the seagull and you blend them together in Photoshop. New technology coming from Adobe soon. Um, okay, here's a shot. I posted this shot and a gentleman told me that he found this disturbing that I would recommend that people should climb on structures in Utah. I think he's right, but then I think he's wrong. <laughs> this structure is, <laughs> this structure and this structure are the, same, uh, are the same structure, but I certainly wouldn't climb on this, but this, is one of those miracles in life. This is a hoodoo that shouldn't be standing. It is the most remarkable, remarkable hoodoo. And at the right angle and the right wide angle lens on your iPhone, you can make it look like this, but um, crazy stuff. Um, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Um, adding special effects. Uh, reflections, reflections, reflections. If, when in doubt, add a reflection. <laughs> when in doubt, add a plane. And then um, this is my closing. This is my closing. Um, recently did some aerial photography, Katrine, and um, uh, I think um, um, it's just stunning what you can do with a small, 
copter in the sky and stitching it together in Lightroom, stitching multiple images together in Lightroom. Similar case here, um, landscapes. Um, Katrine, I think I just have to stop with that, um, with just the most amazing things. Um, you know, a photo like this or a photo like this, and then I'm gonna scroll over Katrine. Oh, I'll go through the other photos that they missed out on here quickly. Oh, why doesn't he stop? Stop, wait. I went swimming with a whale. Yeah, I do that every day. Wait, wait, um, wait, you your phone? I, what, yes, swimming with a whale with a phone. Um, uh, did you know you get lightning with a, with a phone? You can do that with a, um, that slow shutter application. Let's get to the end here. And um, this is what I'm gonna end with, Katrine. What are you up to now, Russ? And what do you want people to know you're doing? Well, Katrine, that was a wonderful question um, because I'm going to put on an event next year called um, the Rock and Roll Reunion. And um, uh, my website goes live on Thursday and they should check into that. Okay, now we'll go back to a nice photo. Um, Katrine, what a pleasure. What a pleasure to speak with everybody and show them my images. Um, do they have any questions as I stop sharing my screen? Because uh, Jeff Shiwi has to talk to me. First of all, Jeff Shiwi has to speak and I wanna hear him speak. Russell Preston Brown. Yes. You are friggin' amazing and it irritates the shit out of me. <laughs> Katrine, that's just what I wanted to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that um, uh, uh, I live vicariously through your uh, various productions in um, some of the great places that I love to photograph in. So uh, I do have a question. It's been too long, Jeff. We need to get together in the Southwest and do some photography. In, I would love to. I love to Monument Valley uh, and There's Bruce all, of, all of Utah and fortunately, uh, you know, President, I, I don't want to get into um, um, politics, but uh, Biden signed in the expansion of Bears Ears. I yes. was really worried about that, Escalante and Bears yeah. Ears. Um, and then, yes, uh, Indigenous uh, People's Day on Monday. Um, I, I've gotten to know some Navajo, and I've actually met a couple of uh, uh, Sioux from South Dakota, and it'd be interesting to do some indigenous people photography. It would, but that, you know, we can talk about this on the side. I would feel, somehow but, I'm feeling uneasy about it as if I'm, I'm taking advantage of them. I'm, um, yeah, except for the fact that if you hire an indigenous person expert to help coordinate, then uh, you can do it with a great deal of empathy and sympathy, not okay. exploitive. But Bruce, I was going to ask you, so yes, okay. you're actually shooting everything. Everything. Uh, on the iPhone or the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, which gives you about 12 megapixels. So are you also using uh, the enhanced function of Lightroom or Camera Raw? Very good question. Them? Very good question. Um, I am not using that. I am a screen person, Jeff. I I am... Um, edit to the screen, and then I post on Instagram and Facebook. No, I understand that. But, but you know, I just, I just printed, uh, where, where is this? I just printed yeah. one of my photos, and it's pretty darn amazing yeah. what yeah. the iPhone can do without the yeah. enhancement that- um, Well, I, I was just gonna tell you, I got, um, I got my little uh, 13. I okay. jumped from a 10S to a 13. That was an excellent jump. Well, because uh, my daughter and I flip-flop, she has the 12, she had the nine. So we basically flip-flop. So now I got the new phone. She, she has a 12, but I really love the functionality of this camera. Yes. There are some things that I wish uh, hey, you would talk to the people um, at uh, Apple um, to have remote control over Zooming. Okay. Hello? Okay, I, 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 he's hogging the time, isn't he, Katrine? I, I I'm sorry. Go, go Katrine. It's a, it is a school night for the students. What time is it in New York? It's it's eight well, eleven. Or what, what? Eight eleven. They have lots what of homework. Is it, is, uh, is he, what time is it in in Argentina? What? 
Ezekiel. It's an hour behind us. Oh, is it? So, que, que hora es, <laughs> Ezekiel, in Argentina? <laughs> well, a few questions have come through. So, sorry. Chat. Okay, sorry, chat. Go for the chat questions. One of the okay. I'm, I'm getting out of control. I'm out of control. Me, I've got a, I'm like the control freak here. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions was you have, you've experienced so much and seen so much. Hmm. Like, are there still locations, people, places that you are, that are on, like on this planet that you would still want to go to? Absolutely. I, first of all, I wanted to go to Argentina to see the solar eclipse. And I like to have solar eclipses guide me through the world. And the next solar eclipse will go through Mexico and Texas. Guess where I will be going? Mexico or Texas? Mexico. Mexico is the answer. Um, <laughs> um, so um, I follow the world, but Katrine, there are so many things to see. We are so lucky to be alive. I'm in my 60s um, and we've got to go see those places. And that's my one word of wisdom to everybody. Don't sit on your butt, go see things as much as you possibly can before it's too late. Um, before your eyes give out, before your legs give out, um, before you, because <laughs> you'll just regret it. And so I'm off. My next adventure is to, I've never been to Norway and I haven't had the chance to shoot um, uh, the Aurora Borealis with an iPhone. And that is my next goal is to go to Norway. So, um, but there's too many. I haven't even been to Egypt. I haven't been to a lot of places that I'd like to go. Okay, next question. You mentioned uh, it's one of your um, people that you admire. Yeah. You mentioned, of course, Ansel Adams. And Ansel Adams and Paul Strand, they were very well known for the idea of pre-visualization of like, you know, seeing in their case, the print while they make the exposure. Yeah. But I'm wondering if you're like under the I-5 in this graffiti area with the fire flames or the other people are think, are you envisioning the final shot or are you sort of like, I'm going with the flow? The truth is, Katrine, I'm going with the flow on those shots because I'm, in some cases, I'm shooting in burst mode with flame, with flames and an iPhone, you can't capture the definitive moment. Um, okay. you, you, you have to, because with a real camera, <laughs> with a S DSLR, boom, you hit the trigger, you capture the moment. This guy's breathing fire. I have to shoot in and hold down the trigger on my, um, my little trigger and a push and hold. And then I get a burst mode on my iPhone. That's the only way to capture the definitive moment with an iPhone and for flames um, is to capture multiple photos. And then of the 20 photos you capture, you capture the exact moment um, where the flame looks great and the exposure looks good too. Is that a good yeah. answer? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think that um, that idea of going with the flow, knowing your technology, knowing the techniques really lets you sort of loosen up and be, be with the artists that you're working with. It's so important. Yeah. And that's the thing about the iPhone. I'm not so worried about, I'm capturing random moments with the burst mode. I'm going, was I lucky? <laughs> Did I? That, speaking of a burst mode, um, someone asked, doesn't that really fill up your phone? What do you do with all those high res files? I do not follow my advice of shooting cat, uh, Apple Pro Raw, don't do it unless you work for Adobe and you have a terabyte of storage. I, I'm, I'm a hog. Um, turn on the storage, turn on um, Apple Pro Raw when you need it, but not for photographs of the dogs and cats. Well, wait a minute, Zona says, down here, oh, I shoot all my photos with, Z with <laughs> no, Zona, Zona doesn't say that. And Zona doesn't sound like this either. <laughs> yes, yeah, so okay. Teresa, Berkel does use, uh, once you shoot it, it gets uploaded to Adobe Cloud. And the yes. one terabyte, it's, it, it's manageable in terms of the subscription. Yes, oh, well, now my sister is calling me. What is going on? What is going on? Okay, she called me later. 
Um, <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, these are great questions. Uh, next question. Do you have more questions? Well, I think, um, you know, your family's trying to reach you. So oh, it's going on. No, don't, no, no, don't, don't worry about that. I should have turned the phone off. There is yeah. not a family emergency. They, they, um, I don't want to break up this chat group, but if you were to put out a book, I'm sure it would be very popular because I follow you on Instagram. I have the little screen and I actually mean? want. Oh, you have to define, define this because David Blattner has been talking to me about this idea. Define what you would want in a book. Um, well, I, I'm going to go back to uh, someone we know well. I love how Julianne Cost mix, mixes her art and the technology yeah. with the books. It's really about the art, but because of your knowledge and your skills, people do like knowing that behind the scenes, you know, some of those techniques, but that should be at the end. So for you now, it's really about the images and you've already broken it up beautifully, the portraits, the landscapes, the night shots, the mm -hmm. artists, there's specific, you know, chapters here and you have so much to offer. And I think people would, and I don't say this often, I think people really appreciate it. Oh. Can I get a, I would in that chat group. So I think it's hard. Yep, okay. Yes. I'm, I'm thinking about this. It is that time in my life I'm a little spinning down. Um, yeah. That spinning down is happening. It would be a good time to do that book. You um, want to catch up with Greg Warman. He's got at least 20 books. Yeah, I'll have a chat with Greg um, and <laughs> go over books with him. Yep. Um, that, that would be a fun oh. idea. Uh, David Bladner and I have discussed this idea a book that would be a combination of photos and videos um it would uh, link together so uh, you like that of idea? course yeah i think what you've really shown us tonight is the the just do it there's no more excuse. yeah everybody has a phone i mean yeah. i'm i'm talking from the world you know people in this lecture they're interested in photography we have phones that are capable of taking great pictures you always have the phone with you you rarely ever hear people going oh i wish i had a camera with me well yeah. And now what you're really showing is how you use your imagination with it, you know, with the technology, the layering, the painting. It's just beautiful. I think everybody's going to, you know, go to your list and, and download and just sort of, in a way, go for it. Yeah. And that's really what you showed us tonight. I think it's been really inspiring. You, um, um, my event coming up next year, I'll have a whole session on, oh, did she leave? Katrine's phone, she's gone. No, 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 I'm here. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, next year, I'll have a whole session on um, the iPhone, um, uh, making the iPhone a, a better a tool for designers and photographers um, at my reunion event in Monterey, um, California uh, next year. And I'll also do a session at um, Adobe Max next year. You know, my goal in life, Katrine, I want to give a session in in Portugal, an Adobe yeah. Max presentation in Portugal. I, I, I want to I want to be on on bricks that are six hundred years old, and I'm walking down a cobblestone. There's it, Los Altos, California is boring. I want some um, old um, and uh, something really intriguing like that. Okay. And yes, I also need to travel to Ar Argentina um, uh, someday. That's on my list. Okay, uh, Katrina, is are we closing? Are we ending? Do we do almost we do one quick thing? Obviously, I had some technical issues here. I tried to jump over the phone, so I'm not seeing the chat quite clearly. Oh. I'm going to ask Tom or Marco. Uh, Bruce Dorn had a question, and then Bruce we'll. Dorn, we're Bruce Dorn, I have a statement to make to Bruce after he asks his question. Um, <laughs> and before, should I bring up my slide again? The RussellBrown.com forward slash night photos is where I keep all my toys. We'll bring that up later. But Bruce, I want to hear from Bruce. Then I'll, no, wait, I'm going to make a statement to Bruce before he um, makes his statement. Um, okay. Why the heck hasn't he invited me out to take photographs of cowboys and horses running through water? And, you know, just because I'm Californian, I was, crossed off the list I, I applied to join his event but I, yeah he, he lives in oh wait a <laughs> wait a minute yeah you are absolutely invited 
uh, we were going to go up to Monument Valley and, and work on my Tank Girl project. There were a couple of times we almost got together, almost. but we'll do it this next year. Okay. What's your question, Bruce? What's your question? I just wanted to know where where you think it's going. Uh, obviously, technology is uh, oh. rapidly. I have, uh, and I have the answer. Fire away. <laughs> introduction to the question what I, I know the answer to this I, I see it happening I see it happening at Google I see it happening at Apple it's some um, computational photography I don't think they want more resolution they're, they're afraid of adding more resolution to their phones because that would mean more space and users can't take more space their users don't want big images their users want compact and small images they can share um, I think they're going to make small pixels look better. Jeff Shiwi is going to correct me on this one. I think they're going to take more and more multiple photographs with the current technology and magically blend them together. And we see that in what they're doing with the night sky on a Google phone, a Google Pixel 4. They take 15 photographs over a four minute exposure and blend those together and take out the motion of the earth. Let me just, wait a minute. What? <laughs> they, they blend 15 um, exposures together to make the night sky look so good. Um, that is where I think it's going. I think we're gonna see really incredible daytime and nighttime shots with computational more and more mathematics bringing together lower resolution images to make them look high resolution within a low resolution world. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Complete sense. Okay, Jeff agrees. Yeah. Aren't they, uh, Bruce, what do you think? Aren't they afraid of making, they can't make it a 18 megapixel iPhone, can they? they, they their, their users would freak out, wouldn't they? Um, what's Jeff sheet think on that? What do you think on that, Jeff? He thinks he's waiting. Um, I, I absolutely agree with you on the computational. Yeah. I remember some of the stuff that Tordor Gorev was working on, the bug eye, where you have like infinite focus and depth of field. Yeah. And, oh, and there is things that you can do um, with smaller capture resolutions that you couldn't do with larger capture. And if you are media only, like Russell claims to be, although, you know, uh, 4K video isn't good enough. Now we need 8K video. Um, <laughs> I, would, I don't shoot a lot of video, but I shoot. No, me. but uh, the bottom line is that uh, uh, if you can, the stuff that you can do computationally, that's the real science fiction. That's the next uh, new uh, frontier. You, you know what the next science fiction is, and we already have it here. You'll take the photograph and then you'll be able to identify the subject, the background, and you'll be able to, you didn't set it as a portrait, but you can instantly blur the background and keep your foreground. We're seeing a lot of that happening. You know, we're also gonna see that happen in Photoshop, but this is not, a, I am not speaking as an Adobe employee, but I do not know this to be a fact, but I think because of the the line, what's it called, line art, linear, the, the the 3D functionality, what is it? The depth map? Yes, the depth map. I think the depth map technology has not been used completely yet. And I think I would love to see instantly going into Photoshop and I have a layer. I, I would love to see that the subject is perfectly masked based upon the- um, You already have that in camera on Lightroom. Do we? Oh yeah. Well, we have select subject. No, you have, when you go up under masks, you can have the ability uh, yeah. to use the depth mask. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's not out yet. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, well, no, but it's been announced. I'm sorry, it's gonna be available at, at Adobe Max. It, it has been, has it been announced? Oh. Well, it's been, uh, they did a sneak and there's been a blog post. It's gonna be very interesting. I would recommend everybody to tune into Adobe Max on October 26th, which is, uh, there's over 400 classes where you can learn and be inspired and continue learning. Excellent. Now, now, 
whatever time zone you're in, Russell, one last chance. Yes. You have another. I, I, I missed that, Katrine. You have another quiz question, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, the quiz question is, of my, of my heroes, um, which one um, is my favorite? Oh. My favorite hero of all time. I don't think I said it, Katrine. The one person who I regret never meeting in person is Carl Sagan. Carl oh. Sagan. Yeah. yeah. That is who I would like to have sat down and had a glass of wine sitting in some scenic location in Argentina, having a, a glass of wine with Carl Sagan. There we go. There wasn't a quiz question, but that that um, amazing scientist. Um, yes. Katrine, we should let, it's late in the East. It's, um, it's oh, it's only 528 here in California. Um, oh, you've given us so much to think about. Yeah. Everybody's going out looking at the night sky and yeah. um, you know, they want to experiment and play and uh, yeah. follow get yourself, you. And get yourself a good tripod, experiment and play. Don't hesitate to um, add a jet if it needs it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, uh, Russell, I want to say thank you very much. You know how quickly you agreed to give me this presentation and how inspiring and informative it was. Really fantastic. Katrine, it was a pleasure. I am honored to have been here um, to give this talk. And um, if you don't ask me back, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you to everybody who took the time to listen to this. Don't forget my notes. Russell Brown forward slash uh, night photos uh, is where I keep all my um, goodies are there. <laughs>